Okay, so up until now, I've only had my 3D printed case for my Orange Pi 5, but uh, thanks to Geekworm, they've sent me two different cases that fit the Orange Pi 5 and also the Orange Pi 5B, which is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth model that doesn't have the M.2 slot on the bottom. So uh, the first one is this one, the N505. You can see it's pretty much the same size as the case I've been using. And that's because it takes the smaller size NVMe drives. But if you want to use the bigger ones, the 2280s, that's the reason for this 506 case. So you can see here that it's considerably bigger. The 505 case before, it used to have a design where you could use it, but it, it had a slot that it would stick out the side. So obviously that's not ideal. Uh, obviously you can just buy the right size drive, but it seems that there's more 2280s available and they seem to be cheaper. So there's definitely a good reason for this one. This is the wiki for the N505 and you can see in the picture here, the Orange Pi 5B, there's a couple of Wi-Fi antennas you can have coming out the side. There's holes cut for that. And early versions didn't have the cutouts because obviously the Pi 5B came later. So it says here, high quality metal material with surface galvanized process. All ports and slots of the case can match with Orange Pi 5 perfectly. Equipped with a five volt 4010 cooling fan for active cooling. It says four pieces aluminum heatsink, but actually in the letter that Geekworm sent to me, there's actually five pieces now, which is recommended for the Orange Pi 5. GPIO cable slot and SD card access and distance mounting hole, you can hang it on the wall. So they've acted on customer feedback to release the 506. They've added a hole for the recovery key and the mass grom key. And they also added an aluminum radiator for the Orange Pi 5B shield. So here's the two cases side by side opened up. And you can see that when the Orange Pi 5 is inside this case, we have a screw hole for the 2280 drive. So once that's in underneath the Orange Pi, uh, that will screw into place. You didn't have that with the previous case, but I don't really mind that because it means you can plug in and unplug an NVMe drive if you go through lots of different operating systems. Uh, I wouldn't rule this out as an option. I quite like the idea of being able to swap that on a regular basis because I go through lots of different operating systems. But obviously if your main operating system is on the NVMe drive, then there's a real positive to having that all enclosed. But if you do want to swap out the NVMe drive, you do need to take this apart to get it out again. That said, you can just put an SD card in and boot from the SD card. So if you want to use, uh, like I generally do, I often don't use the NVMe drive for testing. I use SD cards because it usually prioritizes boot from that. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the stick-on heat sinks. Um, obviously, if you live in a hot climate, that extra cooling is gonna benefit you. I haven't needed it using this fan in the past. I actually connected this to the three volt GPIO pins and found it very effective on my Orange Pi 5. That's something you can't necessarily do with this. Obviously, you could take the cable apart, but this is just set up to work on the five volt GPIO pins, which does mean it's more effective at cooling. So for maximum effect, obviously five volt and these heat sinks. So let's pop it inside. So what we need to do is pop these standoffs inside here and screw these bits on top and do that four times. So that's all four on. Pop the M.2 drive in like that. And then this can go into place. And then we need to screw these little black screws in from the underside to hold the board in place. So that's one, and you can see that lines up perfectly. Yeah, very easy to assemble. And it's worth mentioning while I'm doing this, I'm being sent an Orange Pi 5B. Uh, they contacted me and noticed that I'd done a load of tutorials and said, would I like to try one? And uh, so they're sending me one to test. And let's pop the M.2 in place. Oh, there's a screw in there already. <laughs> So I pop the screw in here to hold that in place and that's all nice and solid. And then it's just the lid and obviously attaching the fan. So this is how the fan attaches. So one of the five volt and one of the ground and that just slides in place and then four screws to hold that. So let's test these buttons inside to see I've got a little, oh yeah, so that's easy enough. Yeah, that's easy enough. So obviously don't poke anything metal in there because you could touch something else on the circuit board, but if you go straight down, 
you do find the button nice and easy. So that's a good addition to it. Although that said, I haven't really used it on mine uh, because the Orange Pi 5 uh, doesn't have any inbuilt storage. You don't really need those buttons uh, because you're just writing an operating system to removable drives each time. Although that said, if I'm flashing to the drive that's in there now, I probably will need them more. Uh, and obviously I will need it for the Pi 5B because that has an EMMC drive. I'm not sure which one they're sending me yet. And we have some rubber feet to go on the base, which is always nice. I don't really like metal on my desk. So let's pop those on and flip it up the right way. Yeah, that, that does feel nice and solid. Yep, happy with that. So SD card slot, let's see if that's accessible. Uh, this is my SD card with uh, Windows 10 on it, the UEFI boot. Yeah, that goes in and out, no problem at all. Uh, we have the button on the front here, the power button, which you do need to, again, use something to access that. I don't use the power button very much. It's been mentioned in some of the comments on my videos that I never, I usually turn it off by the plug uh, because it's accessible, but there is a power button there as well. So everything looks like it's nicely lined up and very accessible, the connectivity. And obviously these are the two Wi-Fi antennas that were shown in the picture earlier on. Yeah, happy with that. Let's boot it up. So I've got Ambien on this SD card. The NVMe drive hasn't got an operating system. Well, actually it has got uh, Raspberry Pi OS on it because these maker disks come pre-written with Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, they do various different versions. I've got an older video showing the SD cards and also the SSD drives, but now I've got these NVMe drives in two different sizes, which I hope to try in a future video. I'll put a link in the description to those. Right, let's switch this on. I can hear the fan, but it's pretty quiet. That was with the microphone very near to it. So I'll run some updates because I haven't booted this up for a while. As you can see, plenty to upgrade. And have I got P-Sensor on this? I'm not sure if I've installed it, but I like P-Sensor for basically showing and remembering temperatures. No, I haven't. So I'm going to install that. Okay, those are done. So sudo apt install p sensor. And do we get an icon? We don't get an icon on. We do on KDE Plasma, we get an icon on the screen. But if I press the Windows key and start typing p sensor, it will come up. And then we can have this readout on the screen. And I'm going to let it run some video. So let's go to one of my playlists. Let's go to my Orange Pi playlist. I've got 37 videos on Orange Pi. And I'm going to leave that playing at 1080. Uh, although I don't know what it's going to do on a shorts video. We'll soon find out. And uh, I'm going to come back when I've had my lunch and see how high the temperature got. Okay, so it's about an hour now and uh, it's still playing and the highest temperature it's got to is about 56 degrees. Uh, you can see currently, what is it, 42, 43. So it's doing a good job and actually it's pretty quiet. It's about, what, a foot and a half away from me and uh, it's barely audible. It is there, so I probably would change it to 3 volt for my personal usage because I think that's enough. Unless I start overclocking... I think that's going to be enough. So let's see if I can use some of these maker cables and uh, and just extend it a bit. Some of these are like male to female. Yeah, something like this should do it. Oh no, they're female to female. This is from one of my Windows on Raspberry Pi videos when you needed two power supplies, uh, one through the GPIO pins. Okay, so just, just as obviously I could do something neater, but just for now I'm going to use this. Uh, so I've got female to female. And uh, if I put in the red, so three volts, uh, this top corner, I'll show it closer in a minute. And the ground is the third one down because there's two five volt ones. Just tuck that in this massive space we've got on the side here because of the M.2 adapter. Oh, so the black one in there and the red one, that should do the trick. Oh, I did say I was going to show it closer. So that's the GPO arrangement with 3 volt. And just tuck that out of the way so it's not going to get in the way of anything moving. Last screw in. And let's switch on again. 
had to look to see if that had come on then because it's that quiet. Yeah, three volts, definitely better. So that was the noise of it booting up for about the same sort of distance as before. So yeah, I'm gonna use it as three volt. Okay, so thanks very much to Geekworm for sending these two cases to me. Much appreciated. And I'm sure I'll be putting my Pi 5B in one of them very soon. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.